What's up everybody? So we're out in the shop with another Shop Talk Tuesday and in this episode we're gonna do a few things. Starting with getting the handle shaped on the 5160 chopper. These are the handles that we attached in last week's Shop Talk Tuesday. We're gonna go ahead get these shaped plus we're gonna put an edge on this, chop some stuff, and I'm gonna announce the giveaway winner for the giveaway knife. So before we get into all of that we need to shape these scales. What I'm gonna do is cut off the excess pin material with the porta band saw and then we're going to come over here to the 2x72 with a new 36 grit belt and we're going to remove all the material that we need to pre hand sanding. So we're going to have the 2x72 do bulk of the work and then we're going to go over to the oscillating spindle sander or you could use a small wheel attachment if you have that or the little drum attachments for a drill press. I'm going to use a spindle sander and we're going to refine the profile just a little bit get rid of some of those grinding lines and then we'll start hand sanding buff it and get the handle done and like I said then we'll do some uh, sharpening and some chopping so without further ado let's get into the grinding portion of this and get this thing knocked out so when it comes to shaping my handle scales I don't tend to do many markings for measurements or anything like that. I do most of these based on how the handle feels in my hand. You know I have a rough idea of where I want to go to because I've shaped a ton of handles. So I have an idea of roughly what the ergonomics need to be for a chopper or for a chef's knife or for an EDC or something like that. So I can already see in my head roughly where I want to go, but I don't like doing the markings because then I kind of pigeonhole myself into what it was going to look like in my head and I try and grind to that as opposed to what feels correct in the hand. And that's what this is all about. You want to make sure that your handle is 100% comfortable so that people will use it. So that's why I tend to do a lot of this stuff purely based on what feels right. Now, like I said before, I've shaped a ton of handles, so I have an idea of where to go with this, and I always suggest that you just practice and practice, and then when you're done practicing, you practice some more. We're never perfect at anything that we do, so it's all about just putting these things in motion and getting used to what you're gonna be doing. Now, I've contoured this handle all of the areas that I wanted it to be contoured in because I know that I want to have a little bit of a swell in the belly area. I know that I want to have a semi coke bottle handle shape. I'm not really going to do like a traditional coke bottle. It'll just be contoured a little extra towards where the lanyard hole is. So once I got my contouring done or my bevels put on there to really identify where the contouring is going to be, it's now time to start thinning the handle so that I didn't end up with an inch and a quarter wide handle. So we got to take off about a quarter of an inch off of both sides so that everything's where I want it to be. And what I'm doing right there is a real easy step to even the handle out as it goes down the sides. So you can kind of contour it, round it a little bit, and make it to where it's starting to get comfortable. Always check, always test it, always put it in your hand as many times as possible so that you make sure that you're not going too far with it because once it just feels right you stop there but I do love doing that like that where I run the scales parallel with the belt and just get everything rounded and put where I want it to be and then we want to start contouring the belly for where your fingers are going to rest see a lot of handles where the cross section for where your fingers go tend to be really wide and I'm not a big fan of that. I want my fingers to wrap around it and it feel really comfortable when it's gripped. 
So I do a lot of contouring based on where my fingers hit. Now we're starting to get a little bit of the Coke bottle area shaped just around where that lanyard hole is going to be. Again, we're not doing an aggressive Coke bottle handle, so it's unnecessary for me to really put a big groove right there. So now that we've done that rough profiling on the 2x72, it's time to go ahead and get on our oscillating spindle sander. You can also use a you know, small wheel attachment, you can do a drum sander on your drill press, whatever you want to do here. Use files, sandpaper. I like utilizing this spindle sander because it does real quick work of getting all my contours finalized pre-hand sanding. And I can use this one inch drum to really get into those areas where my fingers are going to rest to just make sure that everything feels great in the hand and everything's lined up where it needs to be. So typically whenever I get done with this drum sander, and this is an 80 grit drum, I will be ready for hand sanding and then all I'm doing with hand sanding is just really finalizing it. I'm just blending the lines and I'll talk about that more when we get to the, the hand sanding part of this, but the drum sander is a real inexpensive tool to get. You can get one from Harbor Freight and it makes life so easy so you're not sitting there sanding for hours so when it comes to the handle sanding process for this we're going to be using our handy dandy soft sided and hard sided foam pad these are just sanding pads that you can get for wet sanding and pretty much any automotive section of like Walmart something like that. They typically come in a bigger pad than this but I cut this one down to the size that I wanted and this is perfect for whenever you need the firm side to make sure that when you're sanding over the pins and things like that that you're not accidentally sanding the wood around the pin and not the pin because if you use a really soft side or your hand there's a chance that you're going to dome the pin and sand on either side of it because the wood's going to sand faster than the steel. So I use the hard side for that and then when we start getting into this little area here we'll use the foam one that's softer so that we can kind of round this area. Now I will tend to use the hard one in this little area and then the foam one on the corner but it really just depends on how everything's going. So. We're going to get into it. We're going to do 320, 600, and 800, and that's it. We'll buff it after that. But first, we're going to start off by sanding the flat area where the pins are. Get that nice and in order, and then we'll start contouring everything and fine-tuning it with the sandpaper. Now it doesn't take much with the 320 to get the sides nice and even so that you can start transitioning up to the little contour area. And remember at this point we've already got the shape where we want it. All this is doing is just finishing it out. So we're not trying to remove a bunch of material. We're just trying to make sure everything's nice, smooth, and all of the lines are nice and blended. So now we're going to be working on the 600 grit and just making sure that we get everything sanded and get rid of any of the sanding lines from the 320. A lot of this stuff is just repetitive, you know, there's there's nothing super interesting about the hand sanding of bevels or hand sanding of 
handles or anything like that because it's really just going through and doing the same exact process through all of the grits. Again, the one thing that you just want to make sure of is that on areas like this, we're not using the soft side of anything. We're using a firm side or using something like a wooden stick or a piece of steel so that you don't accidentally sand the wood down on either side of this so that whenever you fill across here it feels like one piece and there's no edges that you can fill. But the nice thing about this is this is super tight so there are no gaps in our beveling that we did to make sure everything fit and our flattening of the tang made it to where there is an actual perfect marrying of the the wood to the steel with zero gaps. Gotta love that. So a lot of the times Y'all don't really see me do this, but I'll do all the finish sanding by hand. That way I can rotate it and just make sure I'm getting everything exactly how I want it. And this is with the 800 grit. It's not as much sanding it as it is, I guess you could say polishing it, <laughs> because the grit doesn't really take a ton of material off. But it does get everything exactly how you want it finish wise before you go into the buffing process. So now it's time to hit the buffer. We want to go ahead and use a green compound on a medium buffing wheel. I only use green compound on this wheel. I've got one for gray, I've got one for the different colors that I use. This one's just for green, and I tend to do all my final buffing with it. And it works like a charm on pretty much all the handle material that I utilize. But you'll be able to see how much this pops with the color once we get that buff on it. That just looks absolutely beautiful. And I'll show it off more in the outro and everything, but definitely beautiful. Now when it comes time to start sharpening this, I'm using a 220 grit belt on the 2x72 to set that secondary bevel. Some people would consider this the primary bevel because it's the actual cutting edge bevel. But we use the 220 grit to get that defined and then we start refining that with the other belts, which is gonna be like this one right here, our 600 grit belt. Now, whenever we get done with the 600 grit belt, we're going to have a nice burr starting to build up on there. And then we're just going to refine it a tad bit more and smooth everything out just a little bit more with this 800 grit belt. And really getting that edge exactly how we want it and developing a nice, well defined burr. And once we get done with this belt, we're gonna go ahead and jump over to the stropping belt. This is a leather stropping belt that fits onto a one by 30. And it's by Pro Sharpening Supply. I've purchased a lot of their belts in the past and I absolutely love this one because it does quick work at removing the burr and leaving a razor sharp edge, which you'll see when we cut stuff. Paper towel roll. Paper towel roll continued. Paper towel roll continued. Paper towel roll continued. Paper towel roll continued. Continued again. Continued again. And we are left with the ringlets. Let's say uh, paper towel roll test works. One water bottle. That works. 
two water bottles. That works. Not sponsored. Oh, I didn't make it all the way through on that one because of the length of the blade. I say that works. Go from a bottle to a cup. The handy dandy wood shop. There we go. All right, so what did y'all think about the chopping up the bottles and the six cuts into the paper towel tube thing? Y'all like that? Was that fun? I always have fun doing the multiple slices and seeing how many times I can slice something up. It's always, it's always enjoyable for me. But of course, why wouldn't you why wouldn't you chop things if you got if you made a chopper? You know, I, I can't wait till I can actually cut up some trees with this. I ended up doing that with one of my wakazashis and posted a video about it on the TRU workshop. You can actually watch me, you know, cut up part of a tree that I chopped down with one of my swords. And uh, it's a blast. Uh, it was so much fun. Absolutely love doing it. Uh, if you want to go check it out, link in the description below for the uh, TRU workshop Facebook page. So go check it out watch the video. Plus you'll get to see a bunch of other people that make knives and it's an awesome place to just, you know, have a cool community. But back to this knife. What do y'all think about how that turned out? I mean, I want y'all to imagine this right now. A few weeks ago, this was a rusty old leaf spring. This was something that no one had touched in years until it was given to me. And I was able to take that leaf spring, cut it down, and turn it into this gorgeous knife. Talking about reusing something that people have forgot about. This is absolutely awesome. And again, it's just out of a piece of steel that no one even was messing with. I love it. I love doing stuff like this because it's just enjoyable for me. So we got our R sharpening choil right here. So the R profile on there. Got our maker's mark on it. Beautiful set of handle scales. What do y'all think about that? See, and this is where I was talking about before. Zero gaps in this where it meets up that tapered tang. That's what we're going for. And that's why we put all the extra work in to make everything even so that whenever we put our scales on here, we don't have any of that gapping and it looks like it was meant to be there. Absolutely love that. If you are interested in some of these blocks that I made these scales out of, Oleg, this guy right here, I'm gonna leave a link for his website in the description below. Go give him some love, get yourself some blocks because they are amazing. I didn't have to use a single bit of CA glue to fill any gaps or cavities or anything like that. They're just awesome blocks. So. We give him some love. Now, when it comes to this particular knife, I cannot wait to use it and it's going to be a blast. But I am absolutely ready for the next build, the next Shop Talk Tuesday build series. So, we're going to be working on the Bowie knife, which is the non karambit version of the Bowie that we made for the Bowie challenge. And we're going to make that full size guy right there which is actually bigger than this knife. So we're going to be making that one. That's going to be our next Shop Talk Tuesday build series. It's going to be awesome. You're going to get more in-depth like explanations of the texturing and stuff like that that we did on the Karam Bowie. 
hopefully y'all are interested in that and that y'all enjoy that. But without further ado, we need to go ahead and see who won the giveaway knife. So let's go ahead, hop over to the laptop, and let's pick a winner. So what we have here is our YouTube comment picker. And we need to go ahead and grab our link for the video here. This is the 25K subscriber you know, giveaway video where all the comments are down below it and we it looks like we have 169 comments for people that are interested in it and we're going to end up taking the link copying it dropping it over here and then we've got a few boxes that we got to cl click here so Filter duplicate users, yep. Uh, filter comments based on specific text, exclude blacklist users. Now we're just gonna go off of filter duplicate. Get comments, so we had 169. It narrows it down to 153. Because there was a few people that did the three things I'm in for the giveaway I'm from this place and this is my favorite type of knife but they put it in a couple different comments so yeah let's go ahead and hit start and see who won all right so Chase Kane I'm in for the giveaway I'm from Grand Rapids Michigan favorite style of knife is the Kiritsuki probably butchered that uh, because of how nice the lines are and as well as the utility of the shape so absolutely awesome Chase Kane I'm gonna have you go ahead and email me I think that's absolutely awesome congrats on your knife that you just won so go ahead send me an email the rivers experience at yahoo.com well, Chase, congrats on your knife. Like I said, go ahead, send me an email, experience at yahoo.com. I've got it down in the description below. That way we can go ahead and talk for a minute, and then I can get that knife sent to you. So, guys, give Chase a big congrats down in the comment section down below. You know what? You have another chance to end up winning a knife from me. At 50,000 subscribers, I'm doing a hand-forged Damascus knife. So no power hammer, no press, anything like that. It'll be all hand forged. Guys, 50,000 subscribers. That's all we got to get to. We can do it. We're growing every day. All you got to do is make sure that you share these videos. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Guys, thank you all for coming by. Y'all have an amazing day. Y'all stay safe out there. And I'll catch y'all next time. <laughs>